who is our representative from the prehistoric ceramic research group. Uh, I suddenly was like, oh no, are there more, are there more letters in this? No, <laughs> I think I've got it right. PCRG. Um, Grace has worked in archaeology since 1996, moving into artifact studies upon completion of the MA in ceramics and lithic analysis at the University of Southampton in 2002. Her PhD was on Iron Age pottery production in Dorset with a focus on clay sourcing, which I know all about now. <laughs> she is now finds manager for Cotswold Archaeology and she's been involved with the prehistoric ceramics research group for 20 years holding the positions of secretary, chair, and is the current treasurer. Hi, Grace. I'm uh, just going to pop your presentation up. Thanks, Emily. Um, in theory. There we go. Is there a little bit of sound in your background, Grace, or is it somebody else's? Uh... There's another meeting in the room behind right. you. Okay, no try. problem. <laughs> That's all right. Um, <laughs> Just making sure it's not something somebody I can aggressively mm. mute. <laughs> There's that. And then let me share my screen. Okay, that should all be good for you. Thank you. Um, so I was just going to run through um, a little bit about the group um, and what our current um, priorities are. Um, could I have the next slide, please, Emily? Um, so the PCRG was formed 26 years ago uh, by combining the membership of two existing specialist interest groups. Um, so that was the Iron Age Pottery Research Group, um, who'd been active in eastern England since 1976, and the first Millennium BC Ceramic Research Group. Um, they'd been active in central southern England since 1985. But then in 1994, the scope of the group was expanded to include um, early prehistoric ceramics as well. We've got a very wide ranging membership. It includes specialists who are working in professional practice um, in universities and as freelancers, as well as students, potters, those involved in experimental archaeology, um, and others who are just simply interested in prehistoric pottery. And if you've read an article or a book on British um, prehistoric ceramics, its author is very likely to have had some involvement with the PCRG over the years, either as part of the committee um, or as an ordinary member. Uh, next slide, please, Emily. So the group has traditionally met twice a year with a spring meeting um, and annual general meeting, um, and then an autumn meeting or a conference. Although more recently, this is reduced to an annual meeting. Um, we tried to move around geographically just to give participants across the country um, a chance to join us um, or even host a meeting. Uh, our most common used venues are in Oxford and Salisbury, um, but we've um, had meetings in lots of other locations around the country, including Avebury, Birmingham, Canterbury, Worcester, Southampton, um, all, all sorts of places. The meetings are very informal. Um, we usually have a number of presentations, a wide range of material um, on view and lots of um, lively discussion over coffee and cake. But one topic of conversation has really dominated our meetings um, in the last few years, and that's training. And that's not only a case um, in PCRG meetings, but for also the other period-based groups. Um, could I have the next slide, please? So we've worked closely with um, SGRP and um, MLPRG to create um, the Standard for Pottery Studies in Archaeology, which was first published in 2016. And now, as Kate discussed earlier, um, converted into a CIFA toolkit, and that's you know to promote wider usage and enhanced um, accessibility. Um, and the standard takes the reader through the various stages of an archaeological project, from planning and data collection through to report writing and archiving, um, to not only inform pottery specialists, but also to help those who, who manage and uh, monitor projects. Um, so we're very keen on collaborating with the other groups. Um, next slide, please. And representatives of the three groups met in April 2022 to discuss um, some of the issues facing the industry and to explore some options to tackle them. So specifically, there's been a notable scarcity of pottery specialists in recent years. Um, so we don't have younger specialists coming through the system in the same numbers as previously. There's an aging specialist population that just isn't being replaced. Um, and the route that many of us took to becoming specialists was the master's degree in ceramic and lithic analysis, which was run by the University of Southampton. And this is a really fantastic course. Um, you had Elaine Morris, who would provide shared by shared support and insight 
um, Petrological Skills, taught by David Williams, and the theoretical framework provided by Martin Millett. So it was a really wonderful, unique course, but sadly, um, interest in artifact-based courses dwindled and there was insufficient interest to keep that course viable. Um, next slide, please. So um, when the three period groups met um, a couple of years ago, we looked at some of the resources that are currently available um, to help assist those who are, are working in pottery, um, either as an established specialist or those starting out in their careers, um, so, for example, that we have the PCRG guideline, guidance on recording and reporting of pottery. So um, this is available as a free download on the PCRG website. Um, they provide a framework for those working with pottery um, and were um, updated in 2010 to include the study of early as well as later prehistoric pottery. So part one of the guidelines explores the, the nature of archaeological deposits and finds assemblages, um, some of the um, issues around establishing chronology, both within and between sites, manufacture and technology of pottery, organization, distribution and exchange of ceramics and other artifacts, the social and economic status and expression of cultural and social traditions. It also examines project design, recovery of um, assemblages, levels of analysis, um, that sort of thing. Um, but part two of the document provides a, a fantastic framework for the recording of the material. So you've got guidance on a range of variables um, that um, can be recorded and uh, quantification um, techniques, uh, guidance on reporting. And um, there's a very useful collection of, of references there. Um, and also a, a brilliant section on um, defining pottery fabrics, suggestions for coding systems, um, supported by a range of handouts in the appendices, such as frequency charts, um, inclusion, rounders, um, categories, and so forth. Next slide, please. Um, and then the websites of the SGRP and MLPRG have got links to a wide range of resources. Um, the MLPRG have also approached universities with an offer to collaborate with um, MA and PhD students. Uh, next slide, please. Um, without a dedicated university programme, opportunities for training are typically provided by industry. So that's predominantly within commercial units, um, but not exclusively as some freelance specialists are also providing this opportunity for sort of early career specialists. Um, and this is a sort of um, this sort of form of training it is quite a tried and tested route. So you have an experienced specialist providing training and an opportunity to work alongside them um, as junior specialists while they develop key skills. Um, and this progresses um, to more mentoring of these early career specialists um, as they increase in their knowledge and skills um, with more experienced specialists then just on hand to provide support, answer queries um, and support appropriate reading. Um, there's also an archaeological specialist um, apprenticeship program, but that's quite wide ranging in its scopes. So it won't provide that sort of hands on um, training in the sort of identification of pottery, um, recording fabrics, that sort of thing. Um, it might also be possible to build scope into research projects uh, to enable um, established specialists to support early career specialists again. Um, next slide, please. So the PCRG have considered what practical support um, it can provide as a group to those wishing to embark on a specialist career. So we've discussed putting together a training plan um, to enable um, uh, specialists to um, have a sort of common approach to, to training regardless of the period. Uh, we'd like to collate regional resources to have something on our website, um, again, to support junior specialists working in, um, and but also more experienced specialists working in um, unfamiliar areas. Um, so there are a number of regional type series, um, some fabric series. So it'd be useful to bring together all these existing resources on the PCRG website and um, compile details of, of, of key texts that you might um, require in, in a certain period in a certain region. Um, so for example, Matt Brugnell's work for East Anglia, David Knight for the East Midlands, just to name a couple of examples there. Um, could also provide links to other um, key texts that are more period based or a specific type of pottery. Um, the commercial units are very keen to collaborate to help train pottery specialists. And this does already happen to a certain extent, particularly in East Anglia, where specialists, um, old and young alike, have had the opportunity to work um, with specialists at the Cambridge Archaeological Unit, 
um, because as specialists, we share a common goal of advancing knowledge and um, and at the end of the day, we all love to get together just to talk about pottery. And the PCIG have also discussed the possibility of having um, some regional based masterclasses, so perhaps day schools run by um, established specialists that could also be filmed and made accessible online to reach a wider audience. Um, and reference materials could be compiled as part of this and distributed online. And such a program might be possible with funding from bodies such as Historic England. Uh, next slide, please. Um, and finally, um, you've got the meetings of the PCRG, but also the SGRP and MLPRG. Um, these are a fantastic way to get involved and meet other people working in the field. Um, so this picture is, is from um, a meeting back in 2006, but you have Elaine Morris there who taught so many of us um, and, and is still very active in the group and regularly attends, uh, attends meetings. Um, so uh, we had a meeting in Andover a few months ago, uh, had a, a you know, nice range of pottery on display for attendees to handle, very lively discussions between um, experienced specialists, um, early career specialists, middle career specialists, and just people um, who um, has an, have an interest in pottery, whose careers might touch on this area, but they don't, don't work as specialists as such. Um, um, everyone is there just to talk about pottery, and there is no better opportunity really to discuss and to learn something new no matter how um, experienced you are oh and next slide please and then that's just a, a picture to finish really that was from um, a PCRG meeting in I think that one was 2000 and 2019 so um, yes Elaine again um, but um, also Henrietta Quinnell um, works in the southwest uh, Lisa Brown very well known for her work on Iron Age pottery um, and, and Pete, one of my colleagues here at Cotswold Archaeology. Uh, next slide, please, Emily. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Grace. That was great. Uh, in Because there's no questions yet, but do get your questions in the chat if you have any. There's been some really interesting discussions, though, that you might want to have a look at about... Um, prehistoric pottery specialists in Britain and Ireland um, and the availability thereof. Uh, we did have a question from the pre-event survey from someone wanting to know how they can join the uh, prehistoric ceramic research group. Um, so there is, um, you can, this email address here, the contact at prehistoricpottery.org. Um, if you um, get in touch with um, um, Ellie, who's our um, current secretary, and, and she'll be able to send you out the details, but it's, um, uh, yeah, it, we just have a, we have a mailing list, um, and yeah, then you could just come along to meetings. Great, thanks. I'll, I'm just going to exit this, so then I can paste that in the chat. Uh, oh, exit. There we go. Uh, wonders of technology. There you are. <laughs> okay. Um, I also had a bit of a question, or not really a question, but more of a let's collaborate because this sounds all sounds very much in the line of uh the fines groups uh particular mission at the moment of uh yeah the fine specialist training crisis uh there seems to be um a, yeah a, a key uh point of of interest for for all the groups and indeed historic england as well so um definitely let us know what you're up to uh in terms of training if that's something that we can sort of piggyback off of or if you can piggyback off some of our training we really love to kind of bring all these uh like finds communities together so that everyone gets a much better idea of what's available and we do a nice finesy course love thing so yeah let's yeah let's that chat about that <laughs> great thank you. thank you did anyone else oh yeah so there's a question from Martha in the chat uh, where I'm working or slash training, I'm trying to cover the pottery Malcolm Lynn line. Used, Malcolm line, yeah. Malcolm line used to cover, including some late Iron Age pottery. I was wondering if there's any classes already set up for prehistoric Kent pottery. <laughs> uh, no, there isn't. But um, if um, is it was it Martha sends me an email. Yes. I've done quite a bit of work in Kent, so I could send over some reference material and um, yeah, some suggestions for reading. That'd be great. Thank you. 